All right, another day in the books and another day gone has come and gone and the market is moving a little bit down today, but it's kind of like channeling out. We're creating this little itty bitty pattern where uh, we're actually doing exactly what I thought we would. I think we're gonna go sideways and we're going sideways right now. I'll get into it a little bit more, but I do think that the market is actually poised um, you know, based on the technicals, I think the market is going to go back down and kind of retest a couple key levels. However, fundamentally, and this is not really fundamentals from the numbers, but rather um, after next week, the Federal Reserve is going to speak. And at that speak, they're going to discuss what rate hikes are going to occur. Right now, the one that is planned is going to be a 50 basis point hike or otherwise 0.5% increase in those federal fund rates. Uh, there is an opportunity. Markets are pointing to around a 30% chance of a 75 basis point hike. However, I, at this current point, at the time of this recording, I don't think that is going to happen. And that is because J. Powell, Papa Powell, has rarely, if ever, done anything off the the cuff and almost always does is he says that they, they speak a big game. They say that they're going to do all these awful things. They wait for the market to price it in. And then they say, yep, that's what we're going to do. And they let the market dictate what they're going to do. I'm not saying any good or bad. I'm just saying that very rarely is there actually upsets. Now the upset is likely going to come is when that CPI data comes out the day before uh, representing is that inflation number coming down or is it going back up? If it's going up, things are going to be bad. If it's going down or even stays the same, I think we're going to get some positive action. And the second reason for that is because last week was or the last uh, reading was good. And and uh, this is the last uh, meet. This is the last uh, Federal Reserve meeting for the year, and they're not going to have another one until February, which is going to give us a little over a month and a half, two month time period of some solace, some peace and quiet. And when that happens, when there's no Fed speak, there's no scare, there's no fear, then things are just going to be left alone. And sometimes doing nothing is the best thing that can be done at all. What is going on, everybody? Physio Trader here. Let's take a look at the market. So over here, we got Charles Schwab Street, Smart Edge. Uh, the market is closed. We just dipped into after hours, just got back from some meetings and seeing some patients. And we've got the scanners over here on the left. Uh, a lot of wild ride today. Volume is still pretty suppressed. If you look at this, you know, the TQ is up 172 million uh, shares, if you can read that. Um, but uh, it very quickly drops off. SQ is less, which it's not uh, not too infrequent. Uh, typically, the, the TQ is being long. Uh, there almost is always more volume than SQs uh, going short. The same thing happens. Call contracts tend to have a lot more volume than put contracts, even if the market is a down day. Um, I don't know. I guess people just have a bias for going long. Uh, but otherwise, look at some of the volume. Uh, you're starting to see Tesla have similar volume to NVIDIA, uh, but NVIDIA is low. I mean, NVIDIA, 37 million shares traded. That is really low for NVIDIA, even with it being a cheaper price. Um, and so that's just a, I think it's a sign that this sideways action is coming. Everybody's just waiting for the next move. They're waiting for um, what's going to happen. So I, I do anticipate and I do think that we're going to get some choppy action both up and down. Um, but I do think, uh, and I could be wrong, and I'm happy to admit I'm wrong all the time, that I think things are going to uh, turn uh, to the upside just because we've priced in a lot of fear, a lot of bad things. Doesn't mean I don't think we're gonna go down before we go up, but I think that two month hiatus is gonna be good for everybody. Uh, got the scanners over here left, these six charts are linked. We've got the two minute, the 15 minute, the 30, 60 minute, hourly, daily, weekly. Um, so starting from the top, uh, let's skip on the weekly. So the weekly, we're just gonna kinda, you know, do I anticipate we come down to 17? We could, that's about a $3 uh, move from where we are today. Uh, here's a little bit of closer representation. We did slightly break through. We're getting this nice little doji candle. We can't decide what we wanna do on the day. Uh, it broke through it to the upside very quick in the morning. The morning kind of sold off, went down pretty hard, and then we actually made a nice solid recovery and we had a hard time, got almost to a double top, uh, but we ended up uh, selling off from that 2080 point, which was pretty close to the highs um, and very recently. Um, higher or lower? Um, I said it before, do I think we're going to go back to 18 or do I think we're going to go to 24 first? I think we actually might do a very quick potential retest, uh, but I don't think we're going to break uh, 19 or even 1875, even if we do. And then I think things are going to shoot back up pretty quickly. And that is just because if you look at this, so over here, and that is, by the way, that is not me saying I don't think things could get worse or anything like that, but I'm talking shorter term as in the next quarter. Uh, the next three months cumulatively. I think that we've got enough uh, bad things priced in and there's enough opportunity, there's enough room for things to just be let alone. And so I do think that we have an opportunity 
to see a push. I don't think that we were going to break through 32 to the upside on the TQs. I think it's going to be very, very challenging. And it's a very risk on environment if you are buying into that strength. If you have it now, or if you're accumulating shares down below, sub 24 at that level we uh, I just showed. If you're accumulating shares below this level, that sub 24, that's good. If you're on that breakout, I would start selling into this strength and I would start selling around 31. 32-ish range. Um, and if you get into this trend line even more, 36 or so up to 40, I would start selling off uh, rather uh, a little more strong and having a tighter stop on that one because I do anticipate we're going to get some nice bounces on the way, but then I think we're going to turn around and some nice flippity flops to the downside as well. Tesla, kind of a sideways day here. It looks like we tried to break up to the 180, got smacked right back down in the face over here on that 15 minute chart. Uh, you can see over here on the 30, we are just in this nice downtrend, just really um, this this pink line is or a purple line, this 50 period average is acting like a magnet, pulling it up, but then immediately spanking it right back down. And as you can see today, uh, yesterday, spanked it down, sideways action came up, spanked it down, no difference. So we are, we are getting these little bear flags coming throughout the whole time, but again, they are getting smaller and smaller. So if you look over here, over here on the 60 minute, um, make this a little bit bigger, I mean, this thing has, in my opinion, shown that it is, uh, again, a couple, you know, big spike wicks over here, but we are really starting to decide what area um, is, you know, desiring for us. And I do anticipate that even though things are down, 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 eventually I think that we're going to start breaking up to the top. So much so that I went long a call contract for Tesla, 200 strike price, and I've got it about three months out. So like I said, about a quarter is what I'm looking for. Now I don't anticipate I'm going to hold that. So if we do, uh, now on the weekly over here, we do have this, uh, this 50, or I'm sorry, the 200 period average around 160. I actually do think that we have a higher lower. I think we have a higher chance of hitting that. Um, this thing is going to act as a double bottom, a short term double bottom, as long as with this uh, really strong resistance. We're going to get ourselves a double bottom and kick right back up really quickly, hopefully up to like the 250, 260 range. But uh, again, there's just still a very high probability, and statistically speaking, that uh, we might not get that. And if that happens, uh, I'll just get out of the contract. So that's fine. You know, risk versus reward. Uh, my total risk on is like a thousand bucks. So I'm not going to be out that much. Although I do think from a risk versus reward, I do think I have it in my favor. Uh, of course, that's why I took the trade. Uh, many trades I'm wrong on. Many trades I get out of it. I'm not going to see this thing through to expiration regardless. So it is a trade. I, I went out about three months because I do want to give myself a little bit of time. I don't want to look on day trade on that one. Doing a little bit of swing trading. I swing trade all the time. I don't really swing trade options too often. Still trying to add that to my arsenal. One thing that really actually has me scared more than anything is going to be Apple. And that's because Apple held itself up really, really strongly um, throughout the entirety of this. I did say that I thought that the market was going to come down into this channel. It is doing just that. The problem is, is I thought we were going to go up first, as in up, go up, short at the top, and then let it work its way down. Um, this one, I'm less and less confident that we break through it, that we can start to break through it to the downside and really start to see some ugly. Uh, I will say I am not ready. I think there's still quite a bit of divergence between this top and bottom. And when that happens, we tend to just bounce between it. And then we don't actually get the break out of that, either up or to the downside until that convergence gets a lot tighter at the end. So um, it's still, again, not writing it off. And again, if I'm, if I'm wrong on the trade, then I'm wrong on the trade. So no big deal. But Apple does, um, it does have me a little scared on that one. So definitely something I'm going to be keeping an eye out for. Uh, NVIDIA next. Uh, NVIDIA, this thing is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful from my perspective. Uh, looking at this, this thing is just almost uh, NVIDIA. And so the reason I go through a lot of the same stocks is because I really have like my basket of stocks and I have like 10 of them on my roster and they go through it. So my watch list is pretty easy. Uh, I'll, I'll look and see if there's any hot stocks that are that are pushing volume in the day. But for the most part, I kind of stick to the big tech ones that are highly liquidy. High liquidity, um, a lot of volume in this. And so um, right here, we are bouncing out of this trend line. I said before, I think it's going to break back into this trend line, but the volume is low, which um, is both good and bad. But if I will say this, um, 
sold off. And then today, I mean, this thing just, it fought up on this eight period average so, 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 so well. This eight simple moving average, uh, which me is indicative that it does actually have a little bit of strength. There's a little bit of push behind it. And again, I said it before, I think the market is going to go back to the upside. And when it does that, um, this thing has already shown itself to be a good fighter into that downward trajectory. The downside is, is the volume is low. So if the seller starts stepping in with high volume, this thing could get spanked down very very quickly so definitely something to keep an eye out for um, amazon next up amazon broke through down to 88 on the short side uh, the question is is are we going to make that all-time low which i think is at like 86 um, the all-time low uh, 85 87 so just under 86 um, I do think that we are going to get a little bit of, again, a short-term uh, double bottom. I think we'll get a bounce. I think this bounce is going to last about a month or two. And then I do think coming in February, I think I think things are actually going to go up pretty well throughout the new year. And then I think, uh, I don't really think it's necessarily the Santa rally. I think it's just the, the Fed getting out of the way. And then I do think, um, you know, coming in towards the end of January, early February in 2023, I think things are going to take a hard, a hard turn to, to bear territory. So... Uh, again, these are all my predictions. They could all be completely wrong, but it is something that I am making. These are broad-based predictions. I'm not talking about entire stocks, um, just broad-based. I think this is going to be, a, as again today, Meta, very similar. I mean, things sold off. I did say I wanted to short it above 124. I never took it because this thing went sideways, had a quick bounce up, and then it's uh, sold off. Down to the 113, 108 was my original target, so I would not be surprised if this one still gets there. Um, but we are running into that uh, eight period average over there on the weekly. So that's definitely something that is going to be a uh, support line at this point as we speak. Um, volume is slowing down on just about everything though. So um, I'm really bullish on Meta and what it's going to stand for in the future. I just think the burn rate's too high. I think they're going to get, they're going to blow through all their top line before they get a chance to actually foresee the actual end of it all. So uh, last thing, I just want to go over a couple um, uh, a couple of these meme stocks and see how they paired out. I saw that AMC was down 10% on the day. So uh, this thing is just stuttered down. And remember, they already did their split. They have the AMC and the Ape shares, the non-voting right shares, the, the diluted classification shares. So this thing is getting uh, stuttered into the toilet on that one. So definitely not, sorry, but I guess my camera's going wrong, um, but not the greatest on that one either. So definitely something to consider. And then GME, again, I'm not in any of these stocks. Looks like GME had a GameStop down four four and a half percent on the day. It looks like it had earnings either today or yesterday, and a little bit of sell off coming back. I'm surprised this thing still has life to it, to be honest. Um, I mean, I guess like people are just holding on to this for dear life, but I don't think it's going to be very long before we start to get sub twelve dollars again before the the massive rally started to occur. But anyway, that is it for me. If you have any questions, reach out. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.